Hello everyone and welcome to this video on boss scripting in Azeroth Core and other Aluna supported cores. Today we'll be taking a deep dive into a script I wrote in Lua, a popular scripting language used in various WoW emulators. This script is designed to control the behavior of a boss I made for my custom Scourge event. We'll be exploring how it works, what it does, and how it all comes together to create a simple yet challenging boss encounter. The topic of creating scripted bosses has been something that people have been wanting me to cover for a while now, and I figured I'd go ahead and talk about it. There are other approaches, of course. If you wanted to, you could do pretty much the same thing through C++, but I think Lua is a great place to start. Lua is a high-level, lightweight, and fast scripting language designed for embedding and other applications. Lua scripts are executed line by line, starting from the first line and ending at the last. It uses variables to store these values, and these variables can be of different data types, such as numbers strings, and tables. Functions are a key part of Lua, and they allow you to group a set of statements together and execute them as a single unit. Functions can take parameters and return values, and they can be called multiple times throughout the script. Overall, Lua is a simple and easy to learn scripting language that provides a lot of power and flexibility. Anyway, in this video we'll be examining this particular script in detail, breaking down each part of the code and explaining what it does. This video should provide you with a solid understanding of how to write your own creature scripts using Lua. I've left a link in the description so you can download the script directly and follow along if you'd like, feel free to use it as a template for anything you'd like to create. Make sure you check out the Aluna Lua mod for your Azeroth core as well. So let's dive in and see how everything works. Before writing your script, it's important to understand the different events that can occur in the game world and which ones you want to handle in your script. Understanding the Lua events in World of Warcraft is crucial when creating a script. Here are some events that you may want to handle. On Enter Combat. This event is triggered when the NPC enters combat. In this script, the On Enter Combat function is used to send a random yell message and register the Poison Bolt Volley, cast Hateful Strike, cast Gore functions to be called repeatedly. The On Spawn event. This event is triggered when the NPC is spawned in the game world. In this script, the On Spawn function is used to send a yell message and cast a spell on itself. Please note that if your individual grids are not loaded, your actual script will probably not work unless you're within range of the creature. But to be honest, this is true regardless of how you script your events. There is an option in Azeroth Core to actually preload all your grids. This is very memory intensive, but it is something you can do. On Leave Combat. This event is triggered when the NPC leaves combat. In this script, the on leave combat function is used to send another random yell message and remove any registered events. On died. This event is triggered when the NPC dies. In this script, the on died function is used to send a yell message and send a broadcast message to the player who killed the NPC. And finally, for this particular script, we have check health. This event is triggered when the NPC's health changes. In this script, the check health function is used to cast spells based on the NPC's health percentage, mostly berserk spells. These are just a few examples of the events that could occur in WoW. And the events you want to handle will depend on the behavior you want to define for your NPC. By handling these events and writing custom functions for each, you can create a fully customized boss in an Azeroth core. There's different APIs depending on the different cores that you have. API is basically a set of functions and libraries provided by the emulator that allow you to interact with the game world and control the behavior of NPC. It's basically a dictionary in some sense. Creatures and other elements, right? For Azeroth core, I'll leave a link in the description. But using the proper API when writing a script, it's actually really important to make sure you're using the correct functions. Otherwise, your script's just not going to work and you're just going to continue to get error messages. And keep an eye out for any errors or unexpected behavior. Oftentimes, the server.exe will yell at you when something is wrong, making fixing your issues a lot easier to handle. Let's dive right into the script. So the first function we have is the onSpawn function. This function is called when Patchwork is spawned in the world. The function sends a yell message, Patchwork make Glitch King proud, you die now, and he casts spell 41924 on himself, which is actually a berserk spell. I added this spell in because I wanted to make sure that no one killed Patchwork prior to the first event, and I figured this would be a good way to mitigate some of that. Next we have the Poison Bolt Volley function. This function is called repeatedly every 7 seconds when Patchwork is in combat. Cast the spell on its current target, causing damage over time. And this spell ID is 40,095. They also have cast gore and cast hateful strike functions, which are called repeatedly every 15 and 20 seconds respectively. These functions cast spells 28308 and 48130 on Patchwork's current target, causing additional damage. For our on enter combat function, the function sends a random yell message from a list of options and registers the poison bolt volley, cast hateful strike, cast gore functions to be called repeatedly, ensuring that Patchwork continues to attack its target. Thing that 
that I like about this one is that rather than just having one yell function every time he enters combat, which is kind of boring, I ended up adding an array of different dialogues he could use. That way things are a bit varied and you're not just spammed with the same message over and over in chat every time Patchwork enters combat. You could also make it so that he doesn't necessarily make a yell every time he enters combat, but I was okay just having him do it 100% of the time. Next we have the on leave combat function. So when Patchwork leaves combat, this function sends another random yell message and removes any events that were previously registered. One thing is if you don't remove those previously registered events is he'll continue walking on his path and he'll continue to use his abilities while he walks, which for some people that might totally be fine, but um, in this case I just didn't want him using abilities unless he was in combat. The undied function is next. When Patchwork dies, this function is called. It sends a yell message, Patchwork forget to chew, and sends a broadcast message to the player who killed Patchwork. It also removes any registered events. I'll likely be changing this so that it sends a world broadcast rather than just an individual player broadcast. Finally, we have the check health function. This function is called repeatedly when Patchwork's health changes. If its health drops below 20%, it sends a yell message and casts spell 41305. If its health is above 95%, it casts spell 41924. Basically, these two spells are different types of berserks. The one that's above 95% is actually a stronger variation. The one below 20% is just a frenzy spell, essentially. But using the check health function is a really great way to set your different phases for your encounter if you want to get more complicated and have your boss do different abilities during different percentages of their health. And last but not least, we have the register creature event function, which is used to register functions to be called for specific events in the game world. In this script, we registered the on enter combat, on leave combat, on died, on spawn, and check health functions to be called when the corresponding events occur for that boss. This allows us to define custom behavior for the NPCs, such as what spells it casts and what messages it sends during the different phases of combat. There's actually a lot of different ways that you can write these registered events. One way is if you actually define your NPC ID locally somewhere else in your script, you could just use that definition. But in this case, I went ahead and used Patch Quirk's actual ID, which is 400012. It's mostly a matter of preference, but I find that this way there's a lot less interference with other scripts involved. The register event function is an essential component of any Lua script in Azeroth Core, as it allows us to define the behavior of NPCs in the game world. Without it, the functions we write would not be called, and the desired behavior would not occur. In this script, we use it to create a custom boss to unique abilities and dialogue. And that's really it. This was really just a brief overview of how Aluna Lua functions. I think it's a good idea if you go and check out the Aluna API. You might want to check out a couple books on Lua as well. But once you get a handle on things, it's actually a really easy language to work with, much easier than C++. It's a lot closer to normal human interaction. Most people can read Lua without much knowledge in the language. So yeah, I really like Lua. I think there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. There's definitely some limitations, but those limitations are very small. And I would say I'm probably gonna be using Lua more for my purposes anyway. But of course, the things that I can't change with Lua, I'll do in C++. For instance, I was trying to get the disengage function to work outside of combat for hunters, and I actually had to change that in C++. I'm sure there's a way I could hook it through Lua, but it was just a lot easier to do it through C++ anyway. So, But anyway, this script was just a small example of what can be done with it. There's tons of other things you can do. You can spawn unique vendors. You can have unique objects, other things. Like I said in one of my first videos, you're really only limited by your imagination. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments. I know this was kind of a general overview, but I'm more than happy to answer any questions at any time. Make sure to like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys on the other side of Azeroth.